Stugatz here. SeatGeek is the smartest, easiest way to find tickets for the football games you want to see up close and in person this season. There's nothing like being in the stadium for the biggest plays of the year. And with SeatGeek, it's never been easier to get the guaranteed seats you want for a great value. I have the SeatGeek app on my phone, and it's by far the easiest way i found to shop for tickets. I can be anywhere, and with just a few taps, I can instantly find seats for this weekend or any game this season. Plus, every ticket you buy on SeatGeek is backed by their 100% guarantee, so you can shop for tickets on SeatGeek with confidence. Best of all, my listeners get a $20 rebate off their first SeatGeek purchase. To get your $20 rebate on tickets, download the SeatGeek app, Go to the settings tab and click add a promo code. Enter promo code LEBITARD. SeatGeek will send you $20 after you've made your first ticket purchase. Download the SeatGeek app and enter promo code LEBITARD today. This is the worst of the Dan LeBitard show with the Stugats podcast. <laughs> I love that Guillermo walked in. In the middle of all that, and he is at, uh, he has done his grid of death punishment. If you're watching on ESPNU right now, uh, Guillermo looks like Ziggy Stardust. It's a great costume. I mean, it's David Bowie. You look great. Really does. It's fantastic. But what happened is Guillermo comes into the room and I'm railing and roiling, but also he looks at me because I'm dressed in this tuxedo that I was going to wear to Pablo's wedding. And so he's laughing at me. And I'm pretty sure when he was laughing at me, he didn't realize what he looked like for that moment while he was laughing at me. So he's laughing at me while I'm looking at him and seeing him for the first time and laughing at him. I feel so bad because I feel like a text that I sent caused part of this problem, and I was like not involved in any of it. And I walked in, and I was like, "What did I do?" And I'm dressed like a clown. <laughs> you heard me. You heard me in the other room railing. And uh, here's what happened: I never called Guillermo, and I called him this morning, and I needed some help getting some stuff, including this tux, out of my car. And right. Guillermo's actual sentence to me was, "I can't right now. I'm getting my David Bowie makeup." <laughs> And so that was the sentence. And I know Guillermo, uh, given all his neuroses, just sat there stewing. He's like, I can't believe I failed Dan in a moment that he needed me. No, right, I know. Right, I know. Right. I know. And, First time he calls me for something, for a favor. Right. And, yeah, and I couldn't yeah, do it because I was right. getting David Bowie makeup. Yep. Dan, do you need Chris? I'll send Chris down. I'll do whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, right, I just no, can't yeah, do I'm it. I'm like, no, never mind. And so I could just feel him like uh, sobbing, uh, you know. Crying through the makeup. But you're right. Guillermo cannot laugh at anyone today. Um, it's ridiculous. And you said you were going to wear that tuxedo to the wedding. You have made a change here. You have. Well, I don't know yet. We're going to get to game seven of World Series. Great, great game. Historic. Blah, blah, blah. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but I don't know. Roy says this looks good. Uh, Mike says it doesn't look bad. You guys were saying, hey, what are the two white tigers going to dress as? You guys were saying, I look like a 1990s mariachi band. You guys were saying, I'm ready for the Color Me Bad reunion tour. You guys were saying that Lyle Lovett was going to call because he wanted his tuxedo back, his look back. Hmm. And then I walk in here, and keep in mind, I'm wearing this tux with shorts. And you guys were like, meh, that's not awful. And all I'm trying to avoid, all I'm trying to avoid is putting on a bow tie. Right. And all I'm trying to avoid is upstaging the bride, hmm. which you guys made me feel like I was doing because I was going to look so ridiculous that right. I was going to upstage the bride. I mean, not as bad now that I'm seeing it on you and in person, but still pretty bad. Okay. And I don't know. You could look at ESPNU and vote at Levitard Show if you want. I want all your... Uh, all your tweets today to be signed Ziggy Stardust, please. At Levitard Show. Does it look good on Dan? Well, that's going to be tainted because people are going to vote without even seeing it. How does the tux look? Just make it that. All right. Good or bad. Uh, game seven of the World Series last night. Super fun. Tense. Great. Amazing. Now, that reg that, season that game gets played a lot during the regular season. But it gets great and forever because of the stakes, right? I mean, of all of us are amazed by the game, but it's because everything, everything was on display during that game. Yeah, that game gets played a lot in the regular season. The stakes, the one-game scenario, the two teams playing in that game, the curse, the home run by Davis to tie it up. I mean, it had everything. It really I, did. I know it would have been unsatisfying, but it really should have ended in a tie. 
Like, I know that that would have made everyone furious, but they, I mean, Cleveland, that didn't determine the best team. Just Cleveland, you know, Chicago scored a couple of runs in the, in the, te- in the 10th inning. Like, it didn't, de- those teams were pretty evenly matched and they both had wonderful seasons and neither one of them deserved to lose. And if you were going to do a deserve to lose, the Cubs probably deserved to lose given how many errors they made in yesterday's game. They probably did. I believe, uh, the two teams scored the same amount of runs over the course of a seven game series. I mean, that's how tight it, it was. It would have been totally unsatisfying, but it's how it should have ended, with both of them remaining not winners, but neither one of them losing that series. Right. Because that was not a determination. You realize that basically what happened there is to determine the best team in the sport by a fallible measurement, we're going to play one inning. That's what happened there. Like, we're going to reduce everything this season. All 162 games, everybody getting hurt, everything else. We're just going to, the way that we're going to measure who's the best team is here. Play this one inning after a rain delay. It's absurd as a measurement. With pitchers that neither manager wanted on the mound. Right. (laughs) Right. All they had left. So many great things to talk about. We will be talking about many of them over the course of the show today because that was a lot of fun last night. Baseball was hugely fun, even though Mike turned it off during the rain delay. And one of the polls that we have for you right now, because young people are not watching baseball, one of the polls we have for you are, did you give up on that game last night during the rain delay? Because I imagine casual sports fans may have, like, or not even casual sports fans, I imagine sports fans who are non-baseball fans may have done what Mike did, which is, no, 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 no. I'm not doing a rain delay. I'm not doing 1 o'clock in the morning. At Lepitard Show on Twitter, the poll is brought to you by Cabbage. That's Cabbage with a K, K A B B A G E, supporting small businesses with on the spot access to funding. Visit Cabbage with a K dot com. My wife stayed up throughout the rain delay. She, I, I'm telling you, my wife has been glued to this series. She has many friends. Her best friend lives in Chicago. So she was glued to it. She loved it. She loved the drama. And she stayed up through that rain delay to watch the end of the game. I wonder what the poll is going to come back at Levitard show. Uh, One of the things I want to address, though, with you guys, because it's something I've been railing against for a while now, because I just find it to be a poisonous drag on my absorption of sports analysis, is we have really, because everyone now has a voice and because Twitter and Facebook allow everyone to have the platform more than ever. We've got this cacophony of voices that are questioning every damn thing. The old guy in the dugout does. And I'm, I'm just, I've been tired of it for a while. Right. I, I, it really, I remember where I was when I grew most tired of it, which is Ray Allen makes a shot. And immediately the conversation started with what, did Greg Popovich do with his substitutions? And I'm like, wait, what? Like, Ray Allen just did that, and we're going to question that guy? We're going to question Popovich? And we do it to Belichick on fourth down, and just all of it. I find all of it to be a poisonous sap on the way. I, I watch analysis less than I ever have. Watch Sports Center, watch all this stuff less than I have. I was forced, you know what was forced on me last night? Good God, I wanted to throw my television in the ocean. The actual promo for Fox Sports 1, which was Sharp saying LeBron's a top five player all time and Skip Bayless's argument being no, 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 double no. I wanted to take my television and drop kick it into the ocean. That's how he said it. No, 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 double no. America's fastest growing sports show. Because when you start from zero... And you have one viewer, you're growing fast. Unbelievable, man. (laughs) No, no, no. Double no. That that was the promo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hook me in, though. But what I'm saying is, the, the larger point that I wanted to make on this is, and all the criticizing you did of what appeared to be A Joe Madden lapsing into senility during that game last night. What difference did it make? None. I mean, they won. But I'm just saying. But it could cost them the series. I know, but but I'm saying, like, 
you you want it you still want to do that oh you, so yeah, badly yeah, you still yeah. want to rip you so want to badly. rip joe madden today that's the show you want to do today i don't want to rip joe madden i just don't want joe madden to get any credit for the cubs winning the world series okay but but what i'm saying is uh, all that do you under do you understand my larger point of if we're going to spend all our time doing this we're right. we're we're, ma- we're having these huge huge arguments that are poisoning sports analysis and poisoning great moments in sports like the Ray Allen shot, right. like that game last night, um, with decisions that are in the margins. They don't matter that much. Like, ultimately, what ultimately Stugat, Chapman's got to pitch well. And I understand that all you're arguing there is math and probabilities. The way that he used Chapman in the series seemed hugely weird and came back to bite him last night. You're arguing the usage of Chapman in Game 6. That's what you're arguing. That's I know, it. That's I, what you're arguing. I know, but what, I'm, but what I'm saying is that happened to Chapman against the Giants as well, and it had nothing to do with his usage. I'm saying ultimately the players have to perform to make the decisions right, and when we sit here and second-guess everything, we're always right with our second-guess because our second-guess never has to actually be played out. So we've got the bad result, and 100% of the time we're right with the second-guess. Right. And I'm like, I'm just I'm I'm I'm. <laughs> I'm honestly tired of it. Like, right after the Davis home run, people started blasting Joe Madden for his usage of Chapman and, in Game 6, and then he came back the next inning and got through the inning. I know, Chapman. but... But, no, but, he, <laughs> but no one gave him No, no, there. no, but he had nothing left, and he was throwing breaking balls. Right. But but what I'm saying is we've got this dilution. Stugatz, that home run was such a great at-bat. Amazing. And he's choked up on the bat because he's fearing 100 miles an hour, and all he wants to do is make contact to drive in the runner from second and get one run, and he yanks an outside pitch after fouling off a bunch of 100-mile-an-hour stuff. He yanks with a choked-up bat into left field. He yanks it into the seats, and we're sitting there concentrating on the old guy in the dugout. And his moves. And I'm like, come on, man. That was pretty cool. <laughs> right. But it can be both, right? You can enjoy that moment and still, you know. Get... I mean, it can be both. But I'm telling you that, that it, it's such a proliferation of the latter that, for me, it's soiling the former. It was so awesome, that moment. I mean, 35-year-old Raji Davis, who's been in the league forever as a plug-and-play journeyman. That so was great. so awesome. I know. I heard Kirchin say Raji Davis hadn't hit a home run since August, and Chapman hadn't given up a home run since June. I know. I know, I know, I know, just super cool, super cool. Don Lebatard. Welcome to Highly Questionable, that's Stugatz over there. Stugatz. What do you like on the show today, Stugatz? I love this Kevin Durant conversation and whether or not his teammates should be mad he was rooting for them to lose in the NBA Finals last year. No, they shouldn't, they lost. Oh, and give that's... your take later, oh. Dale Papi. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Catch me and Mike Gola Jr. every Sunday for weekend observations from 7 the 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. The Road to the World Series goes through ESPN Radio. The Dan Lebitard Show is brought to you by the Home Depot, a proud sponsor of the College Game Day Tour, live this Saturday from Baton Rouge as Alabama takes on LSU. The Home Depot, the next generation of home improvement with everything you need to do projects smarter. The Home Depot, more saving, more doing. Tim Kirchin going to join us in 40 minutes. I like a Dragonfly Jones tweet he uh, he put out last night. He just wrote, essentially, I'm paraphrasing here, don't really know baseball, but my opinion is whatever Tim Kirchin says it should be. <laughs> when it comes to baseball matters, there are very few people. Who else is like that across sports media? where you believe so much in everything about them, that they're likable, that they're knowledgeable, that they, they're they good at taking old information and new information, advanced metrics, and they're just so credible. I don't know that they're – if I went all in Man, that's a great with question. all in with a reporter, if I went all in and said a reporter who covers anything, that your opinion is basically just going to be his opinion or her opinion because it's their opinion and you trust their credibility that much. If I go all in with Tim Kirchin – can you beat me with anybody? And don't you don't have to limit it to sports. At Levitard Show is where you tweet us. Uh, Texture writes in here, Levitard, you sound so bitter when you talk about FS1. Bruh. It's not FS1, man. It's that style of sports argument I got no time for. I got no time for. LeBron's top five all time. No, 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 triple no. 
double no. I mean, okay, thanks. That's it. I'd, I'd be making fun of it if it was on ESPN2. Zach Lowe, one of those guys? Zach Lowe's pretty good. Woj? More of a report, right? Yeah, a Woj, little different. Yeah, Woj is good. Woj is actually very good. Both of those guys are very good. I don't know, though, if they're... Because uh, Kirkshin also has the just so likable. Yeah. There are people who dislike Tim Kirkshin. So he has, it's not just the credibility, it's that he's not polarizing about anything. He's never polarizing, which can get in the way of your message. Uh, Stugatz was wearing me out during the break, arguing with uh, what it is that I was saying during the first segment. Well, I was just saying, man, like you're telling people how to watch the game, how to experience the game, how to talk about the game. And I think it can be both. You can enjoy that game while still criticizing Joe Madden's decisions and Terry Francona's decisions. They were so- and that's part of the fun, at least for me. It might not be for you, but for me, and I feel like I'm probably in the majority here, I didn't care who won last night. I really didn't. I did not care. But it's fun to kind of pick apart the decisions that Joe Madden is making because some of them were laughable. I oh, mean, they really were. Oh, I'm not. You have the ERA leader in Kyle Hendricks who was cruising, and you decide to take him out for John Lester, who's on two days rest. Absurd. Um, yeah. And they won the World Series. I'm not telling you how to watch. I'm telling you how I'm experiencing this right. and how wearying I find it. And we're, all, yes, I understand that's part of the fun, that second guessing is part of the fun. And then in that sport, you could do it more educated than most. But ultimately, what I'm telling you is that all Joe Madden is doing is playing probabilities. And in this case, he played the probabilities poorly, not just because the result was bad, because he was playing bad probabilities. Now, he was doing it. You understand that Joe Madden blew a 7 nothing lead against the Red Sox yeah. when he was Tampa's manager, right? That's why he threw Chapman in there in Game 6. All I'm saying is the hyper-analysis of that stuff doesn't matter enough, and it's contaminating the way that we get to experience the great moment, because Davis hitting a home run as a 35-year-old journeyman with a choked-up bat on a 100-mile-an-hour fastball to lift a city that hasn't had a championship in 60 years, I don't want that applause drowned out by questioning the guy with white hair in the, dug- in the other dugout. Right. For me. That's for me. Okay. And I understand that. I want to appreciate the moment that was that home run last night that tied up the game, and I still want to rip Joe Madden oh, but, for going with Chapman but, 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 in Game 6 when but, he didn't need to. No, but see, I don't think I think you get more enjoyment out of the latter than you do out of the former. And I think it's a lot easier to talk as content about the latter than it is about the former. Well, there's no question about that as it relates to content. But, Dan, that's a goosebump moment for me last night. Like You know I love those moments. I enjoyed that thoroughly last night. I really did. I'm not sure how much. I'm not sure that your enjoyment. How can your enjoyment not be diluted by raging against the stupid guy in the other dugout? You're not simply enjoying that moment. Now, we might be talking semantics, but I don't know. Do you have a lot of weddings that you're hugely enjoying because you're getting into a fight in the middle of it or criticizing some guy who did some jerk thing that you thought was really stupid like to me it to me it absolutely dilutes these moments when it's filled with this poisonous bile calling someone an idiot i've had great times at weddings picking apart speeches picking apart dresses picking apart the way people look i've had a great time at weddings. fair enough yeah fair enough and it is part of the fun it's just not part of the fun for me Although I was firing off joke after joke at Madden's expense last night uh, because I was saying that Chapman was going to get a little elbow surgery during the rain delay and they were going to throw him <laughs> back out there as just a torso. I Oh, man, I missed the Boxing Helena reference. That old movie where a woman, uh, I missed the Boxing Helena reference. Such an old, bad movie. I mean, Dan, the team hasn't won a World Series in, what, 108 years? They got a guy 90 feet away, and with two strikes, Joe Madden decides to call a bunt. And what happened? They won the World Series. Wow, that was a bad segment. I'm telling you, at that spot, Stugatz, I'm not even joking. When that 3-2 bunt with a man on third... Yes. was bunted foul. I'm not kidding when I tell you this. That is the moment. 
that I began rooting for the first time for the Cubs. <laughs> Not joking. I was just sort of watching that with no interest whatsoever, and I'm like, oh, no. Let's go. Let's go, Cubs. You know why? Because I want the idiot to win. I want Because Terry Francona managed. Everybody was saying what a mastermind he was. Now where are you? I'm dead serious that when that bunt went foul, I was like, why would they bunt in that spot? Man, I saw Ned Yost win a World Series. <laughs> Don Lebatard. <gasps> Stugatz. When you have the hammer, you gotta use it. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Lebatard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Choose Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline for the best total engine protection you can get. Here's your Sports Center update. Despite their own manager's best efforts to prevent them from winning the World Series, the Cubs still got it done. 8 7 over the Indians last night in 10 innings. Ben Zobris, World Series MVP. Cubs' first World Series championship since 1908. Week 9 in the NFL kicks off tonight. Thursday night football, Falcons and Bucks, 8 25 kickoff from Tampa. And finally, embattled hedge fund billionaire Stephen A. Cohen whose SAC Capital Advisors is charged with insider trading, paid Guy Fieri $100,000 to be his friend for a day, a new book reveals. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. You could reach the show via Twitter at Levitard Show, and somebody writes in, why not just turn the sound off and just watch the game? That way, the pontificating gas bags wouldn't bother you. Funny you should say that, because that happened last night, and I'll explain to you how it happened. Put this on the poll here, Ziggy, and incidentally, Ziggy, real quick, if I gave you to do it over again, which would you choose if you could only have one instead of both? An hour in the makeup chair getting that done, or three hours in front of the camera with it having been done? Say that again? What's the worst part of this punishment? Actually having to sit here for three hours in the full makeup or sitting in a makeup chair for one hour? Having that took applied. a long time. It took a long time to get you to look like Ziggy Stardust. Yeah, I mean, I felt like Myra could have probably done it a little quicker and not How long so, was not it? Whoa. detail. How long Whoa. was it? Was it an hour and a half? Whoa. Whoa. I was there at like at least an hour, 15, an hour, 20 minutes. And for 20 minutes, he kept saying, like, oh, just one more thing. And I'm like, we don't need any more mascara. I'm good with the eyeliner. I mean, she did like, really okay. well. You look, you Perfect. look. Perfect. Yeah. You look it looks really great. Good. She did yeah. great. But yeah. I mean. Yeah. So answer my question, the question you didn't understand. Um. Okay, good work. So anyway. That's a fine, too. Give it up. I mean, honest to God, Guillermo, Christ almighty, man. Simple question. I mean, I mean, <laughs> even I was listening. Want me to answer it for him? No, that's okay. okay. Right. So <laughs> the fine of Guillermo when he's useless contribution. <laughs> when he's useless at the microphone in the way that just make, just wrecks the show. It's a $2 fine. So, um, I feel like that should be doubled. I mean, you asked him it twice. It was really bad. But you asked him twice. It was really bad. And Mike fed him the question. I, so. Never mind. So, moving on. So, you asked me if the announcers bother me so much. I actually had something happen to my television last night that I didn't understand and couldn't fix, which is this. The high definition channel was only giving me ambient sound. If I wanted to hear the broadcast, I had to go to a channel that was not high definition. Hmm. So I just stayed on the high definition channel. And so I want to ask this question, Ziggy, on the poll at Lebetard Show. Which would you prefer? High definition sporting event with no broadcast sound or low definition but you can hear what the announcers are saying because I chose the former when forced with that choice last night because I couldn't fix my television in time to get that fixed. And I just stayed mostly with the high definition and the place that sent me away, the thing that sent me away was that Fox sports commercial. I'm like, okay, see you later. No, 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 double no. You know what? I'm going someplace else. Right. I mean, if Joe Buck is calling the game, I'm going to go with the non-HD channel or the HD channel with the ambient sound, if Joe Buck's calling it. 
All right, Stugatz is on record saying he doesn't like Joe Buck's broadcast, even as he, man, you've schmoozed Joe Buck to get him on the radio. Like you've, I have, but I've been railing against. I, you're right, I have, but I have been railing against Joe Buck for for many many years on this show. Uh, and I found out last night that I was not alone. I mean, I was not alone. Oh no, well no, a lot of people don't like Joe Buck, but are you a sociopath? Like how how shameless are you that you have no problem whatsoever begging Joe Buck to come on this show, right. but you have no problem whatsoever uh ripping him like this uh, about how good he is at his job. Do you imagine how does this work with you? I'd be curious. How does this work with you? All right. How do you think let's say Joe Buck is driving around right now listening to this show. Mm-hmm. How does that make you feel? I'm just being honest, man. Okay, so I'm, I'm just asking- being honest. I like Joe Buck is is a fine broadcaster, and you don't get to where Joe Buck has gotten without being a fine broadcaster. He just wasn't good last night. Sorry. See, because this is one of the the differences between you and me here. I don't care if Skip Bayless is listening right now as he drives around. Mm-hmm. I don't mind if he hears it, and if I saw him, I wouldn't apologize for what I said. You would absolutely bend over backward to be fraudulent because a lot of people think, oh, this is Stugatz keeping it real. No, this is Stugatz being a fraud. He also doesn't weigh it as a consequence, like, at all. Like, you you pose the question, how would you feel if Joe Buck was driving around listening to the show? That's in one ear out the other. He does not see that but as a consequence. But if you saw Joe Buck and shook his hand, right? like if you saw him right now, mm-hmm. what would you say if he said, hey, I heard you, I heard you ripping me? What would you say? I heard you saying I was bad. Um, I'd say most of the times you were good. I just didn't feel like you were very good in a big fraud. spot in Game 7. Fraud. Yo, chicken thigh. Fraud! <laughs> you would just put it on a radio character. What? Say, I was oh. just doing radio, man. Oh. I love you, man. You know I love you. Can't really argue any of them. <laughs> I mean, those chickens know you, man. Yeah, they do. Those Kentucky Smart fraud chickens. chickens know you. They handled that situation. They just gave. <laughs> they just armed you for when it is you inevitably run into awkwardly, Joe Buck. I love. Well, I loved a lot of things about last night's baseball game, but very few more than the idea of John Lester not being able to throw the ball to first base, so he's got to do it underhanded. Like John Lester is an amazing diva. In, in another context, needs his own catcher. You got to go put the 39 year old bum in the game who gets hit in the face with the ball to allow two runs and is wandering around concussed just so John Lester can pitch for you. It's not enough that you give him $180 million. You got to give him his own catcher and have him wander around concussed, allowing two runs on a wild pitch for the first time in a World Series game since they didn't have backstops and the catcher just didn't feel like going and chasing a wild pitch. <laughs> and as you pointed out, I mean, he just can't throw to a base. I mean, I mean, but I've they, seen him throw his glove to I a know, base. I know, but all of that, all of like, think about, all, <laughs> he can't throw to first base. He's terrified. He did it underhanded yesterday, but he can throw exactly where he wants at 90 miles an hour against Francisco Lindor. Great. High to the sport world champion. No, I know. I mean, I know and he needs his own catcher. Yeah. Like, what happens if he doesn't have have his own catcher <laughs> what are the consequences nobody wants to see what the consequences are of that but the consequences of that are he hits a home run over the center field fence as the oldest player right. in the history of the sport to do that in a world series right. game and then it looks like a good move uh so what happens next year because ross retires so who's john lester's new catcher i don't know excellent questions <laughs> got is john lester retired too i know but isn't it, it's amazing like is there anything more diva than that Honestly, we got after Terrell Owens and all these wide receivers. Like, is there anything more diva than this guy who's getting $180 million, can't throw to any of the bases, and needs his own personal fluffer? Cash Moore of the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPNU. College football lives here. LSU is 3-0 since Ed Orgeron took over as head coach, and they've averaged over 41 points in those three wins. LSU has a significant lead late. Up next, the number one ranked Alabama Crimson Tide storms into Death Valley for a huge SEC showdown Saturday night. Fumble! Alabama's got the football! Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Every week during the baseball season, ESPN's premier baseball insider joins Dan and his two guts. 
to drop some hardball knowledge and take your calls. Doris Burke looks like a psychiatrist who starts each session saying, so let's talk about you. <laughs> Here is Dan Lebatard, Stu Gatz, and Tim Kirchen on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. In November, Progressive is giving thanks for our military servicemen and women by donating over 100 vehicles to veterans in need through its Keys to Progress program. To learn more, go to Progressive.com forward slash Keys to Progress. Tim Kirch is going to join us on the Shell Pennzoil performance line in just a second. I'll take your phone call, 786-456-4837. Here's your Sports Center update. A classic last night as the Cubs win their first World Series since 1908. 8-7 to seven over the Indians. Ten innings. Ben Zobris, your World Series MVP. Week 9 in the NFL kicks off tonight. Thursday night football. Falcons and Bucks. 825 Eastern from Tampa. And finally, Deadpool director Tim Miller is developing a live-action CGI hybrid Sonic the Hedgehog. Film, by the way. Get your home in shape for the season with huge savings right now at Lowe's, where you'll find great deals on all your winter needs. So hurry into your neighborhood store today to make your home happy all season long. For all latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Texter writes in, you guys are doing a whole lot of sports talk today. What's the matter with you? We've got a lot of dalliances, actually, a lot of digressions, I should say. Uh, we've got Ric Flair is going to join us. We've got this woman who was bilked by a casino, and we've got a reporter and some fake doctors who mangled a penis surgery. But last night's baseball game was a call your friends, call your parents, call your father situation. Did you see that? And we don't get that many of those and probably the last time we had it in sports is when LeBron James chased down Andre Iguodala in Game 7. That was the height of baseball interest last night, right? Like, that's it. It will never get that interesting again. Well, I mean, there is the absolutist. Uh, well, how could it? Through God's, well, we'll see. Let's see. Tim Kirchner with us. Now, Tim Kirchner told you a couple of years ago the Cubs were going to do this. Told you a couple of yeah. years ago that this was going to happen, that they were coming, and that they were going to be this kind of of good how valuable tim and thank you for joining us if you want to talk to him 786-456-4837 how valuable is theo epstein builder of two of these things now uh he's a curse crusher at the age of 43 years old yeah dan he's really smart and he can see things that others can't see and his vision on these things is remarkable and he's going to go down as certainly one of the greatest executives of all time, if not the greatest executive, for what he did in Boston and now in Chicago. And the key, Dan, as you know, is when he got there, he looked at it and said, wow, is there a lot of work to do here? And he promised, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it methodically. And they were really bad under him for several years. And people were starting to wonder. But he said the whole time, "I, I know how to do this. And they got there a year earlier than I thought, but he built it perfectly to the point now that this team could contend for many, many years to come. Granted, they have tremendous money and resources, but he helped build some of those resources with the way he drafted and developed players. Timmy, obviously a classic last night. I love when you do this. No one does it better than you. Put that game in perspective for us and the audience. Well, it's certainly one of the greatest World Series games I've ever seen. It's certainly one of the greatest Game 7s of all time. But I'm trying not to overstate this, but I don't think I am. I think that was the biggest night in Major League history. More people watched that game than any other game in in the history of the sport. And when you look at the storylines before the game, 1948-1908, the whole Theo Epstein element, the whole Tito Francona element. He wins, he walks into the Hall of Fame. The whole Corey Kluber pitching again on short rest. The whole story about how these teams got to this point made it going into the game one of the greatest nights in baseball history. And then we got that ridiculously great game with so much drama. I mean, I've seen better games than that because that was an imperfect masterpiece last night in a lot of different ways. But as far as drama storylines and everything else, I really believe that was the biggest night 
in Major League history. What was your favorite snapshot? Snapshot. You got Rizzo pocketing the baseball before going to celebrate on the mound. You got Chris Bryant smiling. Can't keep the smile on his off his face. Awesome. As the ground ball that is the last out rolls to him at third base, you can see him smiling. He's not worried about an error. He knows that he's got the game wrapped up. What was your favorite snapshot? Well, those are two of them. And then David Ross on people's shoulders players' shoulders walking around the field after the game was just uh, was just unforgettable, given that, you know, this guy is 39 years old. He is going to be now the only player ever to hit a home run in Game 7 of the World Series and then retire. No one's ever done that before. But without being corny about this, Dan, the snapshots for me are all the Cub fans who – Cried after that game because it is personal to them, as it is to so many other fans in so many other cities, but maybe more so in Chicago because of 108 years. And when I got back to my hotel last night after work, it's 2.30 in the morning, and there is this fellow my age standing in the hotel lobby with a Cub shirt on, and he's literally crying. And I'm going to stand right next to him, and I just casually asked him, are you all right? And he said, well... I just talked to my father on the phone. He's 90, and he'd never seen the Cubs win before. And he said he cried through the whole conversation, and that's what this story is all about. And now Cleveland has the longest drought, right? They go from they go from that close to Amazing. they've got the longest drought in the sport. Is that accurate? That is true, Dan. And, and let's let's not. Look, they, they had a 3-1 to one lead in this World Series, and they lost the World Series. But it is a miracle in a lot of ways that they ever got to this point without Michael Brantley, who's their best all-around outfielder, and boy, could they have used another good outfielder in this series. They got here without two of their three starting pitchers, Salazar and Carrasco, who are really good. And Tito Francona did one of the most amazing jobs I've ever seen getting this team prepared and getting this team to this point. And uh, they almost won. And I just feel so sorry for them. I know we're not allowed to feel sorry in this business, but my goodness, 1997, the way they lost that game and then to lose in extra innings in 2016, it's just heartbreaking. I'm here in Cleveland and you can feel it wherever you go. Tim, did you have a scratch your head moment with either of the managers last night? Up! A, um, a scratch your I had head about moment. Ten, I had about ten scratch my head moments, mostly with Joe Madden, which again is the beauty of the sport is how we're allowed to second guess as we're watching here. I, I can't believe the way that he used a role as Chapman in game six. All right, maybe you bring him in in the seventh inning to get Francisco Lindor with two guys on with a five run lead. Maybe. You can think about that. But then you get him out of the game and get him ready for game seven. Instead, he pitched him in the eighth, and he started him to pitch the ninth inning also. Amazing. And then last night he took Kyle Hendricks out of that game after four and two-thirds innings. That kid was dealing. That kid has no pulse rate when he's on the mound. He is so so competitive. He is so good. And they took him out early and brought in a starting pitcher when pitching relief in years on two days rest. And then he brought Chapman in again. Joe Madden made so many second guessable moves and the Cubs still won. And maybe that's how this had to happen, that they won the first time in 108 years with all the adversity, including from their own manager, who is a great manager who did some not so great things in this postseason. The bunt, 3-2 count bunt with one out. Whose decision was that? Was that Madden's? I'm told the manager called that one, and that's unbelievable to me, Dan. In fact, I was in, I was watching a game, and a guy came up to me, had missed a couple of pitches, and he came up to me and says, do you think there'll be a squeeze here? I said, there's two strikes, you can't squeeze here. And then they tried it. It was unbelievable. <laughs> and that was just another thing right. that I just smacked my forehead and right. said, this, this can't be happening. This is Game 7 of the World Series. <laughs> These things that are going on here, can they can't happen in June. They're happening in Game 7, an elimination game. It was just stunningly good. Matt, you're on with Kirkshin. Go ahead, Matt. Hi, right, Tim. Um, I've had a girl. Uh, she's been with me for about a year. Uh, she recently has been real sketchy um, and then asked her what's uh, what's wrong and she tells me that uh, 
I'm actually um, the boyfriend that she's been trying to hide, and she actually has another boyfriend. How should I handle the situation? Thanks. Oh, uh, again, I'm the last guy on earth that should be asked about this. Um, <laughs> um, I would have to tell her, look, uh, I'm not the other boyfriend. If, if you have someone you like better than me, just go yeah. there and yeah. leave me out of this. Uh, that's what I would that's do. That's perfect advice. Yeah, good mean, advice. Good, good advice. Job, Bill, you're on with Kirkshin. Go ahead. Hey, Tim. I'm looking for a stock tip. Uh, the Atlanta Braves are currently trading for about 17 a share on E-Trade. I was wondering if you would buy now. Uh, well, I've never bought a stock in my life either, believe me. Um, the Braves are getting better. They're going to be pretty good in a couple years, but it's going to be a couple years. They're not in a very easy division. So I would say uh, be careful with that one. All right, let's play our game for the final time this baseball season with Tim Kirchin. Are you ready, Tim Kirchin? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for anything after last night, believe me. This is a tired Tim Kirchin. Yeah, he's tired, yes, and we yes. thank him for his time. Pete Rose <laughs> looks like I drew a face on my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dallas Bra- I want to meet. I want to meet all the guys and girls that write these things. They're the cleverest yeah. people in the whole world. Okay. Dallas Braden looks like a lawyer on a daytime TV <laughs> ad, reminding me I could be eligible for substantial financial compensation. <laughs> he looks like everyone. Yes, he does. Will William Shakespeare, right. Larry Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Butch Jones looks like the guy who tries to get off the plane first from the back row but gets stuck in the aisle next to you. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. guy's on every one of my flights. Yeah. <laughs> Umpire Joe West looks like a baked potato. Terrible. I talked to him yesterday. Right. Yeah, but he does. He looks like a big potato. It is terrible. Sam Bradford looks like a frozen FaceTime conversation. That's pretty good right there. Doris Burke looks like the librarian who, upon hearing a hushed conversation, pushes her glasses up her nose with the eraser of her pencil, squints in the direction of the culprits, and then shushes them at a volume twice as loud as the conversation itself. He's going to really like the Andy Reid one. So you ready for the Rand- Andy Reid ones? He's in the top five. All right, but here we go. With the big guns, go. Yeah, Andy Reid looks like the chef on a cattle drive that rings the supper triangle vigorously when the food is ready and eagerly watches the Cowboys eat, awaiting their approval. Andy Reid looks like the actor using a History Channel reenactment of the Civil War who enters a tent to give Lincoln an important update. Andy Reid looks like after a nice dinner out with the wife, once in his car, he gets in to leave and with much excitement says first order of business, then pops the button open on his pants and loudly exhales. Don Lebatard. Stugatz is very excited about this Derrick Rose trade, and he'll talk himself into anything, and he'll forget things said in the past. Damaged goods. He should have goods on the back of his Bulls jersey. Stugatz. But he's mine now. I know. He's my damaged goods. That's, yeah. That is right there. Sports <laughs> fandom. But now there's upside. You should have upside on the back of it. His yeah, right. jersey. He he does does upside. Upside. Retired damaged goods. Put that jersey in the rafters yes. in Chicago. And now this is a fresh start. Upside is what it says on the back of the jersey now. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. You can get in touch with the show anytime through the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed at Lebatar Show at Stugat 790 Dan, it is time for Straight Talk. It's presented by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks half the cost i know we've talked a lot of sports today and i know uh many of you are upset by that rick flair is going to join us we've got a miami herald reporter reporting on a crazy story in miami that's not so crazy in miami because we've got a lot of fake surgeries in miami a lot of fake doctors 
We've told you about the story about uh, we got a lot of fake stuff in Miami, and we've yes. told you uh, that the fake butt industry is very popular here, more popular here than it is anywhere. And we got a lot of fake doctors, one of whom ended up in jail putting fix a flat in a fake butt for a human being. And now we've got a, man- a mangled penis situation. Uh, with someone who tried to get a penile enhancement. So we're going to get to that. And we've got that lottery winner who was a loser. She got a steak dinner. She won $43 million. That's coming up in 10 minutes. She won $43 million at a slot machine. Yeah, and it, was then- a, it wasn't lottery. It was a slot machine. They claimed that it was a malfunction. There was a glitch. And so they took the $42 million back and gave her a steak dinner. So we're going to talk to her in 10 minutes. Uh, but a lot of the things that we analyze in sports were rendered meaningless last night in a way that I found interesting. It's not just that for all the criticizing we do of the managers, the loon won last night. The loon is holding up the trophy. Um, it's this one. How many of you were saying the pressure was getting to Baez? He's a great defensive player. He made two errors early. Was the pressure getting to him when he hit the home run? Right? Or how about this one? Rizzo's in the dugout, wired for sound. Before I left the sound, I actually heard some useful wired for sound. It wasn't on the David Ross home run where they went to wired for sound and there was no sound. It was just him running the bases very professionally. (laughs) Breathing heavy. I mean, they went to wired for sound. That was access to show you we have access. Yep. That's access. Here is the sound of no sound. Here's wired for ambient sound. Here's David Ross breathing. Why? Because we paid a lot for the rights to this, and we have the rights to put a microphone on him breathing. How do you not make fun of that when it happens? How does Joe Buck or somebody that, well, that was useless. You have to, right? (laughs) I mean, how do you not make fun of that? That was totally useless. He was wired for sound. There was no sound. There was a, a point in the game where they showed Anthony Rizzo saying how nervous he well, was. Well, this is what yeah, I was going to say, but, what, what, I, going, what, yeah. but what I was going to say with this, how much of your analysis? There's a guy articulating for you that he is terrified. Double. Double late. <laughs> Double in the, in the inning that matters most. How about David Ross, the cagey vet, the guy who's been around forever, he's been in these moments, and his advice to Anthony Rizzo? Breathe. I mean, there was a lot of useless stuff. You were telling me during a break uh, that that what was being celebrated after the game was the team meeting Jason Hayward called during the rain delay. (laughs) They were almost giving him credit for the victory. I'm serious. $180 million and Jason Hayward gave you a speech during a rain delay. To remind you, this is what Jason Hayward said. He said, I reminded them who they were. Well, at that point, who were they? I mean, honestly, they were a team that hadn't won a World Series in 108 years. How many road games did it go without a hit? That's, I mean, it's just beautiful, all of it. In terms of mythologizing and narrative, leader. Some things show up only in the clubhouse, where the Cubs wish that Hayward had stayed the entire postseason. He should have just conducted meetings. That is Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable networks. Speaking of mangled penises, 21 straight road games without a hit. Oh, right. Uh, Hero. Yeah, remind Leader. Team meeting. Leader. Team meeting. Leader. Team meeting. Let's, I'm going to remind you guys of who we are. I'm someone who doesn't have a postseason hit in 21 straight road games. $200 million for guys bringing in. Yeah. They. <laughs> Um, the, uh, the Cubs do a dong celebration. Yeah. Instead of high fives. Yeah. Yeah, They stick a leg out and they catch the, the inner thigh. Yep. All right. We've got this built, uh, slot machine winner. I want to go through this. I want to figure out what happened to this woman here. She's going to join us next. Don Lebatard. The bifocal eyeglasses. Stugatz. Marcus Mariota. Growing up right in front of our, 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 our eyes. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Lebatar Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Here's your Sports Center update. The Cubs won the World Series last night as they took game seven, eight to seven over the Indians. Ten innings. Ben Zobrish, your World Series MVP. Cubs first World Series championship 
since 1908. Russell Westbrook and the unbeaten Thunder visit the Warriors tonight. Westbrook said it's just another game on the schedule. And finally, Miss Piggy now has a couture fashion line. This Sports Center is brought to you by J.C. Penney. Hurry into J.C. Penney's Lucky Day Sale and get great deals throughout the store for just seven dollars. Plus, get ten dollars off when you spend twenty-five dollars or more with coupon. That's getting your pennies worth, J.C. Penney. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. We'll get back to baseball at some point here with varying degrees of success. But Katrina Bookman is. Someone who was recently laid off from her housekeeping job at a local hospital. She's got four kids, and she was playing a slot machine, and it gave her a $43 million jackpot, $42.9 million. But then the printed ticket reportedly showed $2.25. So she was very excited. She thought she had won $43 million. The casino said it was a slot machine malfunction. So let's go some of through some of this story with Katrina Bookman. Thank you, Katrina, for yeah, jo- thank for, you. for joining us. Okay, tell take us through what happened. Take us exactly through what happened. Well, I went to the casino expecting to win, just like anybody else to, and I played in the slot machine. I was actually playing two machines, two same machines, and um, I was playing one to my right, and the winning one was to my left. And then as I played the match, of the machine, and when I went to hit the machine to my left, the witty one, it, you know, then I just glanced to the right to hit that one. When I came back to the left one, all I see was a screen of 43 feet. Really, all I did was freeze and just get numb. <laughs> so what was the machine that you were playing? Like, what came up on the machine? Was it all whatever it was supposed to, or was just it just said $42.9 million? It just said $42.9 million. It didn't say star, question mark, dot, 42, star, dot. It didn't say nothing like that. It said 42.9. All right, put us there. So your reaction when you thought you had won $43 million? Uh, I was in a state of shock. I was excited. I was feeling great. All I could think about is, where's my ticket? Where's my ticket? They saying that I had a ticket. I had a ticket. Nothing really came. That was a blank thing. They sent me 225. You show me what you're talking about. I would love to, for them just to show me what they're talking about. And when I do what I won, they telling me all the people coming around me, they're taking pictures, and the uh, business people coming with the fancy suits and the fancy shoes, pull me to the side with securities and all that stuff, and they're telling me, uh, they're giving me a dispute form, and the dispute form, they had to make sure I was me on the security camera, then they got in touch with the person from the slot machine and the person that owns the casino or whatever, and they told me to come back the next day. What did you think while playing the machine that was the maximum payout? Did you think it was that much? Well, actually, of course, I would think it's that much when people is telling me that I should come back the next day and they're giving me a dispute form because when it came on the floor, the technician from the machine also came to the floor and a lot of people came to the floor and they, the people that works the machine, they said, oh, they act like they didn't even know what was going on. All right, so explain this to me. Katrina Bookman with us on ESPN Radio. When you started playing the machine, if I told you, What's the most that you can win here if you get the maximum jackpot? What would you have guessed the most was? The most was, at that time, I think it was $200,000. I'm not too particular sure because I was playing two machines at mm-hmm. that time. So, And how much was the machine you were playing? What's the maximum amount that you were playing? The maximum machine at that time, it was $4 or $5 max. I was playing 4 or $5 a game. Okay. And the max was, I think was $4 or, yeah, $4 the max. And, and that's what I played, the max. And how often do you play that machine? Well, there's a lot of different machines. Yeah, I usually play on the second floor. I play on the floor. This is when I just got free time and, you know, I'm free. I, you know, I want to get, have a little front time with my friends or something. It's a close area, so we usually go there. It's just that when I was playing the machine, it wasn't no manufacturer. It wasn't nothing wrong. It was you know, wasn't nothing wrong with the machine or nothing like that at all. So it's just that I would like to let people know that 
that day of August 23rd, I wish they would come forward and get in touch with my lawyer, my attorney, Rick Allen, the best. He really made things happen for me and stuff like that. He, you know, helped me get through all the things that's been going on and stuff. And he explained to me that, you know, we can get through this. So I'm trying to get people to know to play that machine. They might have lost their money through the whole day. You know what I'm saying? Whoever was playing that machine, they need to come forward. Because if they say that something was wrong with that machine, that means, oh, they something was wrong with it. So anybody that was playing that day, they might have been getting their money taken away. And they tell me that I, all I deserve is 225 I didn't start with no 225 So what are you talking about? That's all I deserve. You know? Well, what do you feel like you're entitled to? I've been telling to least I'll say the math word for well, all this. I say I deserve the forty three point nine million. You say I'm with you. I think I deserve to have that at least half or something, but not no steak dinner. I would rather for them to prefer me giving me a slot machine ticket and let me play their machine again so they can take it back. They could have did something like that. They would sit there and offer me a steak dinner, and you know, and thinking it was like, hey, take a steak dinner and run. And I knew for a fact, he told me, you got to get a lawyer. So what I did was look around, look for the best lawyer that I could find him was Alan Richter. And he was just a person that made me feel comfortable. And he told me he believed in me. And he's fighting through here with me. And I'm not alone. And he's making me feel safe and secure. Because this is a scared ride, you know, when you're dealing with people that's, you know, top door, white collar people, business people, got that money, people. And they just, people little like me. They just want to stomp down. And if you don't know no difference, they'll try to take advantage of you. I so there is woman. help out there. I, love, awesome. I love this yeah, woman. You're great. Was the steak good? Steak good? I ain't getting no steak. I got my own steak. Right. I got my own steak. We'll leave that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Believe yeah. that. She don't need your yeah. crabby second place steak. I don't need steak. your steak. I'm good. <laughs> First of all, I don't like red meat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina Bookman with us. I eat fish and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina Bookman with us on ESPN Radio. So, so how does this work? What's the next step on this? What do you think is going to happen next? What does your attorney think is going to happen next? We just hoping that they just sit down and try to make some type of agreement, some type of just have a little sit down or something like that, and just talk to us, you know, because. The way they handle it, they told me they'd get back in touch with me. Nobody never got back in touch with me, you know. So when I got in touch with my lawyer, attorney, Alan, he really went through it with me, you know. He really sat me down and he let me know that he believed in me and we can get if something should come out of this. Something should come out of it, even if we have to bend and, and no one play these casino or manufacturer doesn't play or plays. How are you going to say that? You telling people that, hey, if the machine breaks down, if you win, hey, anytime you want, this is going to break down. That's not fair. If it doesn't do that when it takes my money. Yeah, we need to get behind Katrina. Yeah, Let's go. Katrina, Everybody get behind it. Katrina. Yeah, yeah, get yeah, behind yeah, a little yeah, woman. Yeah, 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 we're with Katrina. Let's go. Pay that woman her money. Come on. Yes, we need people that's real people. Who want to be playing with a machine anymore? We need people. These 15 slot machines are taking people jobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the machines yeah, cannot win. Yes. Yes, indeed. It's taking people jobs and stuff like that. You know, they're saying that, oh, they are donating to the education and stuff like that with the women. Okay, cool. That's good. I love it and everything. But I guess I'll do a little more, too, in my community as well. All and right. believe me, they have jobs. Hold on a second, Katrina. We're bringing in a big gun right yep, here. Yep. Carl Douglas from the O.J. Simpson documentaries. He's our attorney on retra retainer here. Katrina, one of the best attorneys in America yes, right yes. now. Okay? Uh, Carl, we got your back. We got Carl, your back. this is the issue we've got. This woman, that she 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 hit a slot machine, $42.9 million, and the casino said it was a malfunction, and they gave her a steak dinner. That's all they gave her. And she's got pictures, and they've got $42.9 million, the jackpot, uh, Carl, help this woman out. Gee, Dan, it's, it, it sounds like something is really wrong, man. Yes, yes. we need your help here. We, yes. need to bring, we need to bring in a big gun to figure out what kind of case this woman's got here. Well, you know, sometimes if something is so outrageously wrong, it's hard for you to, to believe that it's accurate. But because $42. million on a slot machine is clearly something wrong. 
but something more than a steak dinner should be the... That's right. The what more? Right. What more? Right. That's right. Damn right, Carl Douglas. What more? How much more? 40 million more steaks. Yes. Yeah. Come on, Carl. Carl, what should she be asking for? She should be asking for a couple of million dollars, perhaps. I don't know. Yes. All right. Good conviction, Carl. He came Woo-hoo! in here. Yeah, he came yeah, in strong. Yeah, yeah. Come on. 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 Carl did not have the conviction that we needed from him on this spot. Well, I wanted Carl to help her out, like take the case, do something. Let's go. No, no, he didn't sound like he wanted any part of that case. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> All right, Katrina, we're gonna we're in your corner. A couple of millions. Uh, all right, at least a couple of millions. We're with yes, you, Katrina. Yes. We're not gonna forget this. We're not gonna let this go. We got right. you back, okay? Katrina. Appreciate th- y'all. Yeah, have a great and blessed day. All right, you too. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you. Don't forget, you can hear more of my songs Dan and his two weekdays. Starting at 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN U. Hey guys, it's Maria Taylor from Beyond the Lights. Make sure you check out the newest episode. We bring in Princess from Crime Mob. Remember that song, Duck If You Buck, from 15 years ago. We've got the star rapper from the song in our spotlight. Dave Ovala is going to join us here in just a second on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Wrote a very interesting story in the Miami Herald. Here's your Sports Center update. The Cubs won the World Series last night as they took game seven, eight to seven over the Indians. Ten innings. Ben Zobras, World Series MVP. Cubs first World Series championship since 1908. The Philadelphia Eagles have released wide receiver Josh Huff. And finally, according to the Washington Post, ranch dressing is what's wrong with America. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. So the headline in the Miami Herald was mangled penis leads to 40 months in prison for woman who performed illegal surgery. And he has a way of writing these stories. And as I said, Miami has a way of producing them. So thank you for joining us. Uh, give us uh, how it is that you happened upon this story, David. <laughs> well, you know, um, I always call Miami, uh, Miami's criminal court, the best theater in all of, in all of uh, South Florida. And, just happened to be in the hallway and, and uh, one of the prosecutors said, hey, you can check out this hearing. And this was a couple of weeks ago with another um, another doctor who had been arrested as part of a former doctor who had been arrested as part of the same case. And uh, yeah, lo and behold, it's just this uh, bizarre, uh, bizarre <laughs> case where this poor guy got and, and it actually went on for more than a year. He gets the surgery and it kind of doesn't it doesn't go well in the first the first go around. And for like a year, he's dealing with his mangled junk. And then, you know, he keeps getting different creams and they keep giving him all this different stuff. And then, and then, uh, and then a year later, he ends up doing the second surgery to try to fix it. Uh, and that one didn't go so well either. And then they ended up arresting the two, uh, the two doctors because, or fake doctors because, um, yeah, he's, uh, he could no longer perform and all kinds of other issues. All right, hold on a second. I've got only a million questions, so just give me a second. <laughs> I mean, seriously. All right. Um, uh, first of all, and, and try and keep it as clean as you can, but the first surgery that he was going in for was what, enlargement? Yeah, the first one was, was an enlargement. Now, mind you, with the same woman who used to be his facial lady, he had actually done some surgeries with uh, like a butt enhancement, and also like a chin enhancement, um, all done in like a warehouse in Hialeah. And this woman is not a doctor. She's just like a facial lady. And I think she might have had some medical training in Columbia, of course. Um, and then, and then he, uh, he's like, oh, well, let's, let's make my penis bigger. So um, he does the surgery, and that one didn't go so well. So then it kind of just all spiraled from there. Okay, so what are we talking about? What were the issues that, and again, be careful if you can, what were the issues that came upon this man in the botched surgery? Uh, well, there was a lot, but gosh, let's see, how do I <laughs> dance around this? Um, a lot of it was, uh, you know, bleeding, skin was raw, um, you know, fluid back up. He couldn't, like, you know, urinate or 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 get, uh, you know, aroused. I mean, there was just all kinds of problems, oh. man. And it was, let me tell you, I've, I've covered a lot of weird things in my career, but it was like, I, like I couldn't even, like, it was cringing and just like squirming in my seat listening to this stuff in, in court and also when I was reading the uh, court, court documents. So we were talking once about uh, the fix-a-flat doctor. I think it was Pebbles the Model. 
She, uh, she, I think she was doing surgery on somebody with fix a flat. I might be confusing my pop culture stories. Regardless, I'm on it. Uh, 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 it was a butt enhancement with fix a flat. What was she putting into the penis? It was. This, it was. It wasn't fix a flat. It was like this. Uh, it's. It's probably like a silicone type of uh, type of um, filler that I guess is pretty widely used in Colombia. Um, and 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 a lot of people go down to Colombia for it. But then you know when it. When it uh, they need it done cheaper, then they they do it here in people's houses and warehouses and you know random fake clinics. But Dave, you agree he probably should have had concerns when he walked into a warehouse as opposed to a doctor's <laughs> office. <laughs> That's sort of the universal, the universal, uh, the universal reaction. But you know, I think it's only like it's normally like five hundred bucks. I think he might have paid a thousand dollars for the the second surgery to try to fix it. And uh, and I think I, I was kind of researching it last night, and I think it can run you like ten to thirteen thousand dollars for the real one, for the real procedure to make it bigger and longer and thicker. So that's kind of what uh, I guess. Yeah, it's just you know cheaper. Wait a minute! This doctor told the man <laughs> to tie two popsicle sticks to his penis to keep it straight <laughs> yeah. while it healed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, and 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 he's like. So at this other doctor, the second guy who got arrested, he used to be a plastic surgeon, and, and he'd actually, this is not the first uh, patient death, um, patient penis mangling that he's been involved with. There was a, a sub, another one in the 90s that got him in trouble, and ultimately he lost his license, did prison time, and he came back out, and he was doing it again, supposedly, uh, allegedly. And he, um, yeah, that was his remedy when, like, the guy's, like, texting him pictures of it, and, um and, and he, yeah, he said, just pick two two sticks and, and tie it together, keep it straight, it'll heal better that way. And then he just stopped answering his text after a while. Anything funny or weird we're missing? Well, the interesting thing is uh, the, the defense lawyer for this uh, this woman actually represented uh, another, uh, another um, couple uh, that was doing butt enhancements in their home in Hialeah. Um, and that one was interesting because the, the victim in that case was a stripper, and she, um, the reason, you know, it kind of came to light was because from what I understand is there was a cop who was actually at the, uh, at a strip club and said, Hey, what's going on with, what's going on with your butt? It's kind of like messed up. And, and that's sort of how the investigation got rolling. Um, and those people are now, you know, they're now on probation. They're convicted of all of that. So it's this huge industry that's, uh, kind of underground. I mean, it's just, it's crazy amount of money in, in South Florida. What was the defense team strategy? Um, cooperate. <laughs> they, she she flipped. Man. Let me tell you, she was close to. I mean, she could have done up to like ninety three months to thirty five years in prison if she'd gone to trial. And ultimately, oh, she know, got off guy, light. Like this is yes, the most egregious yes. thing I've seen in the history of the American justice system. Yeah, as the as the as the lawyer said, you know, she was facing a stiffer sentence, and she uh, ended up only getting forty months. But she's got to cooperate against the the other doctor. So that's the trade off. David Ovalle with us. The headline in the Miami Herald, Mangled Penis Leads to 40 Months in Prison for Women, for Woman Who Performed Illegal Surgery. How prevalent is this in Miami? We we are the capital for this, right? Like there is in Los Angeles, nobody's got, in Columbia, nobody's got us beat on this, right? Uh, for illegal, yeah, man. It's, it's huge. I mean... You know, there's. I mean, the, the irony is that case I was talking about with the uh, with the uh, with the stripper, um, who is the victim. Um, when the cops raided that that couple's home where they were doing this, there was actually a medical doctor, a real medical doctor there, who was taking his wife to get a procedure there. So it's like when they when they raided the house, man. It's yeah, it's big, and I've covered. I don't know, three or four different deaths involving some of these illegal operations. Um, and there's always different lawsuits and different complex. Yeah, it's huge. And, and a lot of it stems from our, you know, sort of our relationship with Columbia. They actually will organize trips to go down to Columbia to get work done. And then sometimes they need to do the touch-ups and all that. So they'll do them here in homes and living rooms and warehouses. The punishment for her should be what? <laughs> well, the bottom of the sentencing guidelines was like 93 months. Um, but, you know, if that was my penis, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, I, it would be hard for me to want to get up and, and testify in court so I can understand why the, the poor guy didn't really want hard. to press it to trial. Yeah, yeah, it would be really hard. Uh, can you explain to us the most you squirmed 
the most you squirmed reading any one detail, being as careful as you can on the radio? Um, in this case, in this case, probably just the details of um, just, the, you know, it retracting and, you know, fluid back up and all this meta. And I didn't even see the photos in this case. So, you know, Lord help the, uh, the lawyers who had to actually sit down and, and, and read all that stuff. Yes or no, you used the phrase stiffer sentence on purpose. <laughs> uh, remember how you were talking the other day about how you would go to, to Marlins baseball players and kind of like you would just say something and they would repeat it back to you, and that was sort of the go-to thing. So I, I'm not going to lie, I kind of go to the defense lawyer into giving me that, that quote. All right. Excellent. Excellent work. David Ovalle, thank you for being our weird correspondent, our, co- our, our co- news of the weird correspondent. Again, mangled penis leads to 40 months in prison for a woman who performed illegal surgery. Do you have any other questions, to Gods? Do you have anything else? No, I am good. I've got a question. David, what is, like, your title? Like, what is your beat? Um, well, I'm technically the courts reporter, but I kind of just say all, you know, crime and all things weird in Miami. Um, and it's just, I'm telling you, man, this place is addicting to, to cover news in. I've had chances to go so many places, but I can't stay away, man. It's just, it's, yeah, it's like great. an addicting drug. Yeah. It is. it is great. Thank you, David. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Man, you guys talk about some weird <laughs> time for some ads. This city is so wonderfully crazy. My father said ads there, time for some <laughs> ads. <laughs> warehouse. I mean, that kind of surgery in a warehouse. Yeah. Yep. I don't care how cheap it is. <laughs> I, you can't. You can't. That's not the place where you go with discount surgery. If you're going to get that surgery and you pull up and it's a warehouse, you immediately turn around and go back to where you came from. Yeah. That's I mean, uh, we talked to Jeezy the other day on the television show, and he talked about paying for some sort of vocal cord surgery with a brown bag filled with cash like 65 or 70 thousand dollars he can't do it that way either i would say although he did (laughs) libertard guillermo you were here throughout the entirety of that we talked to them for an hour what did you think you guys were listening what did you guys think was the best thing in there stugats um you weren't listening. Okay. I mean, good talking so to you. Going on. Okay, good talking to you. You weren't listening. Excellent work by you again, as always, Guillermo. You you brought it strong as always. This is the Don Lebatar show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. If you missed any of the show, you can listen to all three hours of the Dan Lebatar show on demand in the ESPN app. Plus our Miami only hour that has before the show, and now you can subscribe to our best of podcasts. It's all available in the listen tab of the ESPN app. Many people are complaining because Ric Flair is going to join us in 15 minutes, and we're doing a lot of different stuff the last hour that's not World Series related. And all I would say to you is that ESPN is a menu, and almost everything at ESPN right now is serving World Series. And if you want it, you can get it anywhere on ESPN that you want it. And we've done a lot of it. We've done... I, because I know yesterday was a great game. It was fun. I was calling my father. I was calling my friends during the game. I was doing the same, and we did ninety minutes on it to start the show. And we're just we're doing our show. This is you know we're doing our show, man. So now let's pick helmets out of a bucket with a grim reaper meant to signify death, who always falls out of character because she's clumsy and incompetent, but genderless, even though I just called her she. Uh, now, strategy changes this week because Greg Cody's got the swap helmet. So if any of us pull the golden helmet of life, three weeks of buy out the first try, he's got the Bills. Bills on Monday night or Sunday night, whenever it is, against the Seahawks. So he gets to swap anything good so uh, now it's even worse than it always is. yeah there's no incentive you got to put that puppy back because the golden helmet of life is, is essentially a bill's helmet and yep. it just means greg is safe for uh, three right weeks. so mm-hmm. here's what we've got the way this works and this is why guillermo today is uh, dressed as ziggy stardust i'm supposed to do bobby petrino at some point i thought i was going to do it this week but i guess i'm going to do it next week that's my debt what is your debt do you have any debt no i'm good i did the uh the selfie stick for an entire show yesterday and that was my final debt so mike I, what I is clear. your debt oh man and I got so much. I got the 12 hours of Cage, and I got to dress up like Rick Steiner in a very revealing outfit. Okay, Oof. you got to watch 12 Oof. straight hours Oof. of Nicolas Cage movies and Periscope it. I am sorry, Mike. I have a uh, deaf, ca- uh, 
I have a Def Jam poetry thing to do, right? Yeah, two yeah, minutes? yeah. You have to perform uh, two yes. minutes of a Def poetry jam, right? Roy, what do you have? I have a cryotherapy thera- and a taquito from a, ga- <laughs> from a gas station. Okay, you got to eat a taquito from a gas station. Tis the season. Okay, that, people don't know the names. You got to explain after you say they're clever like, names. Honest to God. Tis the season. He has to sing uh, Christmas carols up to random strangers, no matter the actual season. Never mind. All right, let's uh, let's pick uh, from the bucket here. I, unbelievable that Stugat just has so many debts that he forgets them. Just forgets them. What's oh, a new one? Forget some. Yep. Uh, Guillermo, as Ziggy Stardust, is reaching into the bucket right now. I got the Browns. The Browns are plus seven at home against the Cowboys. Throw that back. Go ahead and throw that right back. Ooh, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? By the way, this is Fat Chris's last week of safety. Yeah. Boom, coming to life. I got the Ravens. All right. The Ravens are at home against the Steelers. Three-point favorite. Good enough. There's nothing good in there. That's as good as you're going to do. Like uh, It's not good, but it's... Uh, Big Ben's out, and the uh, Ravens, I believe, are coming off a bye. That's not a bad helmet All right, there. there you go. I mean, yeah, but... Wait, is Big Roy ben is now selecting, not waiting for anybody. He's got the Houston Texans. Bye week. Bye week, baby. Bye week. Nice job, Roy. Congratulations. Congratulations. But right now, you are the clubhouse leader to be swapped with right. Greg Cody. Right, Cody gets So don't celebrate too hard. Yep. I have or do you want to put it back? Oh, yeah, you got to think about I, I, it. You're going to, yeah, that's it. That's, He's going right. to keep it banking on somebody else to pull something better. Okay, very good. Uh, Mike Ryan is now going to pick from the uh, the bucket of death. That's an interesting choice, choice Roy. Mike Ryan. And the Tennessee Titans. The Titans are at the Chargers. They are four and a half point dog at San Diego. Putting it back. back. Yep. Man, I am so scared of that double death and the fans' choice. I Just all of it. so scared. All of it. Scared of all of it. The New York Giants. All right, so you are like uh, a two and a half point favorite at home against the Eagles. It's not great, but whatever. Coming off a bye, it could I mean, be worse. I mean, yeah, it could be worse. They've won for me once. All right, so the uh, the Grim Reaper is now coming in here, and Stugatz is going to do that annoying thing that he does. I like to rummage around in the bucket for a minute. Oh, do you? Yeah. Is that right? I'll rummage around here. Rummaging around. Here we go. Rummaging. Rummaging. Here we go. I have a coin flip helmet. Oh, very exciting. First time this helmet's been uh, pulled. Now, if you decide to keep it, yes. remember, we have the Greg swap. He can decide to take this from you. Your fate, whether or not you face the grid of death, is a coin toss. You pick heads or tails. <laughs> I'm going to put that back. Yeah, I mean, why would you want that? Why would he want that? Come on, man. It's essentially a coin toss. I love the drama. <laughs> I mean, why would I want that? <laughs> what the hell would anybody do that? That's a good what is that? It's a good helmet. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I got the Colts. All right, okay. you are stuck with the Colts and Packers. Oh. It's okay. Wait. Uh, Chuck Pagano said that this is a defining moment for them. All right. I feel better. I'm picking here. I got the Cowboys. I'll keep the Cowboys. Oh, congratulations, Dan. Nice great pull. Yeah, that's uh, so had Roy, a really good year. Yeah, you have a great year. Roy, you uh, you have the Bills, just so you know. Just so you know. Like, <laughs> Cody's swapping with you. <laughs> Cowboys at the Browns. Your strategy, Roy. I, I mean, that's why there's nothing good in here, Roy. Nothing good in this damn godforsaken thing. Rick Flair joins us next. Mike Ryan is so starstruck. He loves that he can text this guy. He loves that Rick Flair sends him back a muscle emoji because of course he does. Right. Mike Ryan is so excited right now. He's just giddy like a like a schoolgirl. In Mike's defense, we're pretty excited for Rick yeah, Flair. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we love yes. Rick Flair and we need yeah. him as our celebrity prognosticator. We're down three games to Colin Cowherd. We've had a bad run. We're twenty and twenty, so we're gonna get Rick Flair to pick some games. For us, thank you, Rick, for making time for the show. I'm wondering if you're in agreement with some older wrestlers who have criticized the current generation of superstars for being too boring, too sober, too uh, too not fun. Well, first of all, the problem I have, Dan, and I'm assuming I'm talking to you, right, Dan? Yes, sir. Yeah, is that um, I have a, a daughter that works there. So I try to stay out of commenting on that. Um, let me put it like this. Um, you, you know, some of the things you mentioned above, I'm not sure that I could have worked there right now. <laughs> so right. that let, let's sum it up with that. I, uh, um, first of all, I think the guys are 
unfortunately, over-criticized with social media. I mean, if social media was around when I was wrestling in the 80s, I would be in jail. Okay. I mean, probably every other day. Okay, very good. <laughs> Um, yeah, you, yeah, because you were you were a notorious partier, right? Like you, uh, wouldn't you buy? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't get in trouble. I didn't get DUI during that, but I had fun, you know. And it's, you know, it's so easy to critique somebody today, um, and the company's just very conscious of social media. So, um, yeah, you know, I just everybody has to be in their best behavior. But I will say this: the young guys that we have on this and with the company right now are phenomenally talented, and. uh they have their fun, but probably, you know, in a private place. Well, how does this work? On Ric Flair, there, it's been reported that you'd buy 100 drinks a night. you just give them out to strangers. You were the life of the party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's probably true, but I, I'm not sure that works for me at the end of the day. It's kind of like my, as we discussed last time, my uh, my overly frequent marriages <laughs> yeah it's it's not financially prudent it's not that yeah uh, well, yeah it's not it's not exactly uh within my financial manager's range <laughs> so i how, just could listen to him so how does this work though on rick flair's biggest best partying night what does the tab look like oh god um i like to talk about that I have the uh the biggest night i think i ever had um you know, like 11000 So what, what what was your life like when you were using the private jet? Can you tell us what your life was like when you were flying by oh, private, the private jet? The, the private jet, uh, the nights were uh, in Vegas, you know, anywhere from three to 4000 a night. Chicago, three to 4000 It depended on, on number one, well, what time the curfew was or, <laughs> or how late they stayed open, but... Um, we certainly had fun. We worked really hard, and I don't, uh, I'm never ashamed of the fact that we had a lot of fun. Um, cause we put the time in. I mean, as you know, Dan, we talked about Dan. I, for 15 years, I wrestled 365 days a year, twice on Saturday, twice on Sunday, with maybe, if I was lucky, depending on where I was, uh, as a world champion on Christmas, not even Christmas Eve off. Well, and like, and people might not know this about you, Rick. Like you were always the first guy in the gym. Like you might have been soaked in booze, and yeah, you might, right. but you were always working hard. First guy in the gym. People have at least paid me that uh, respect. I never missed a workout because I knew that if I didn't do it first thing, I would procrastinate like I do now. As I've gotten older, I find a reason not to go, which is ridiculous, but. It's so easy to say, well, I want to go to the gym today. I'm just going to do a damn lip show. What the hell? <laughs> so, I mean, I can find a reason not to go, but I I still take it very seriously. Fitness is important for everybody, and God's given me this gift of great health, and I don't want to, I don't want to abuse it. So everything's good. What part of your body hurts the most, Rick? Nothing. is an, And that drives people crazy. Really? I just, wow. went, I just went to the University of Pittsburgh for the annual physical that the company requires for concussion, uh, you know, heart, um, all the A and above. I don't have any implants. Um, I've had two rotator cuff surgeries. Neither one of them bothered me at all. I can still do a 60-pound seated um, uh, uh, shoulder presses. Um, um, I can bench press, you know, not not... 300, but close. If I wanted to train harder, still bench press 300. My legs don't bother me. My knees don't bother me. And the how, thing that, that the how, thing that, that right. how is that possible? I I don't know because it drives them crazy. These doctors that at these physical Whoa! that's yeah, how. I think think about the airplane crash. I mean, because they told me I'd never be able to wrestle again. Then they told me I'd have arthritis, you know, the rest of my life, and I feel great. So. Well, God gave me a gift. You messed around with the airplanes, right? You guys were a little bit reckless flying those airplanes, weren't you? We were very reckless. Can you? Well, you know, the, the guy that the guy that was flying the plane we crashed and didn't have a license, un- unbeknownst to us. You know, it, it killed him and paralyzed uh, Bob Ruggers and Johnny Valentine. And I broke my back in three places. Uh, David Crockett. It will never be the same from. Uh, a concussion issue. I mean, he's he's, he's good now, but he's, he's he's never been the same after that. And 
Tim Woods, God rest his soul, walked out of the plane. So it was a very uh, unfortunate situation, but we had a lot of high spots in those private planes. Not so much in the jet, but the the old twin engine King Airs and stuff like that. Rick Flair with us on ESPN Radio, The Nature Boy. You've had a fascinating life, and it starts from the very beginning, right? The orphanage, you've written about this in in your book, the orphanage that you were a part of had a stolen baby situation. Like, you don't know. What is your backstory with that orphanage? Uh, well, I just know what I was told, you know, by my mom and dad. And then, of course, um, when my parents passed away, they gave me all the information. But I, you know, it's funny. Everybody wants to know why, you know, my ex-wife wanted to know one of them. Um, <laughs> excuse me. One of your ex-wives. Wanted, w- wanted to know why I wasn't interested in, in my medical history. And actually, she would get mad. But I had, no, I had no desire to go back and find out, you know, who my parents were. Um, I was born in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, my parents had... I was lucky enough to be adopted by were the best parents in the world. And and they were dealt a bad card. <laughs> you were bad were you a bad kid? I wasn't a bad kid, but I had fun. You know, I was like um I was uh, I, I, I didn't do things that I was never malicious but I you know, I did try to buy liquor underage. I did ride my motorcycle around the sidewalk at the lake when they were out of town. I was like, I'll put it like this. The last time I was in front of the judge, he said, next time you're back here, young man, bring a toothbrush because you're going to reform school. <laughs> so <laughs> I've I got, said, yes, sir. <laughs> I love this guy. I've got a couple of rapid fire questions for you because I've got a million questions, but we don't have enough time. Do you regret, okay. do you regret at all the, the black, the black scorpion period? Where you were wrestling with a mask? Oh, I hated it, my yeah. God! But, yeah. but man, I, that was a that card was dealt to me, and actually, they wanted Barry Windham to do it, and I said, "Guys, I'm not going to ask Barry Windham to do it. I'll do it." The hell! Yeah. <laughs> okay, terrible time. That's okay though. It's a, I don't want to re relive. But Dan, what you should have seen me wearing my black scorpion robe. We're on the St. Louis Marriott afterwards. It was very entertaining. <laughs> you know about the lobby of the hotel? You were wearing the black scorpion robe? Were you exactly. wearing the mask and nothing else? I just the robe and the mask. Yeah. Yeah. How about, expl- you know, I, now you've had a very accomplished career, but what the hell happened in, in Raw in 2002? How the hell did you lose to Rico? Like, what hell? What I mean, what the hell? What the hell? I How did I lose to Rico? I'm so trying to ask Jack Lanza. What the hell, <laughs> man? I mean, you're Ric Flair, know, man. One week up, one week down. You know what I mean? I mean, huge ups. One of the biggest in the history of sports. Like, I don't know how that yeah. doesn't go down, like, with the 1980 Olympic hockey team and Mike Tyson. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, how'd you lose to Rico? I know. Well, you know what? I don't I call those guys that I put over in those days? Where, where are they now? <laughs> uh, the whole collection of them. Where are they now? All right, we need him they're, to win. They're, they're not on your show. No, no, yes. well, I'd never talk yes. to Rico. Yes, I'd never. That's bull bleep what they did with Rico. Why, why, why would you? <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, and play celebrity prognosticator with Ric Flair. Okay. And now it is time for celebrity prognosticator. Let's win some money. Jets at the Dolphins. Dolphins minus three and a half. Who you got? Uh, I'm taking the Dolphins. Philadelphia at the Giants. Giants minus two and a half. Who you got? Philadelphia. Detroit at Minnesota. Minnesota minus six. Who you got? Minnesota. Pittsburgh at Baltimore. Baltimore minus three. Ric Flair has got? I got to go with my good friend, Coach uh, John Harbaugh. I'm going to go with uh, the Ravens. Big Ben is back. Do you care? Because uh, we gave oh, you Ben. Ben, ba- is ben, is ben yeah. back? Yeah. yeah. We may yeah. get, we get oh, Ben. Let me, let, me, let me flip-flop that. I, I didn't know Ben was playing. He, he's a good friend. As well. I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. What happened to your good friend, Harbaugh? Oh, what happened? I think he just said Roethlisberger is a good friend. Good friend. What yeah, happened? But, uh, I just, I've, known, I've known Big Ben longer. Okay, very good. <laughs> Denver at Oakland. Pick them. I'm taking Denver. Okay. Uh, Rick. Hey, you know what? You got, I know I'm going to say this. Let me rethink that, too. Okay. Because I my picks are based on relationship. Um, I'm really good friends with uh, our, you know, I know Jack real well. 
I'm going to go with Oakland. I'm really happy that that program has gotten better. All right. All Very right. good. Nice. I'm going with them. I'm going from the heart. Instead of, right. uh, what I, go, go ahead. Well, you have our heart. You have our heart. And while you're not a trained monkey, you know how we want this interview to end, right? <laughs> What's that? Well, we want we want the signature. Well, you want me to, let me walk outside here. I'm in a public establishment. Oh, oh inside okay. would have been even Wait, better. What about the game tonight between the Falcons and the Buccaneers? All right, All right. Bonus, bonus game. Go bonus ahead and game. give what it to got? us. Who you, you like? I'm taking the Falcons, man. All right, All right. Falcons All right. minus four. Bonus pick there. Uh, he's going to walk outside of the establishment here just to give us okay, a signature. I'm, right, I'm here right now. Right, so, right, you baby. want me to give you the whole the whole spiel? Oh, please, Everything. please. We would love please. that. We're going to back Dan off. Dan Levitar, this is the nature boy, Ric Flair. 16 times your world heavyweight champion. The limousine riding. Kiss stealing. Wheeling, dealing. Jet flying son of a gun. That is so honored to have been a guest on your show. Ladies and gentlemen, nature boy, Dan Levitard. Woo! You can listen to the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and you can watch on ESPNU. Oregon brings an offense averaging over 40 points per game into the Coliseum to face the red-hot USC Trojans. Coverage begins Saturday at 6.30 Eastern on ESPN Radio, presented by Dr. Pepper.